Well, greetings again. This is Dr. Bill White, and I'm talking to you from beautiful Glen Rose, Texas, <laughs> and uh, we're proud of our little town. And uh, I'm with the American Orthodontic Society, and I want to talk a little bit more about this Big Daddy Archwire. Now, I didn't give it that name. Uh, well, I was just going to call it an overlay or something like that, but uh, some of the students in in our art in our lectures over the years, they just started calling it Bill White's Big Daddy Archwire, and that name has stuck. So we're just going to call it the Big Daddy Wire, and it's uh, made up of about three different sizes of wire: the 040, the 036, and the 030. Uh, wire. Uh, the O three O is where if you're kind of a pansy and don't <laughs> care about much force in there, you can use that wire uh, on it. And you can just do so many things with this. And yeah, I don't care who you are, I don't care how old you are, and I don't care anything about it. You put this on somebody and it will expand their arches. If it doesn't, you've got it hooked up wrong, because it'll it'll do an expansion of any body's arch. Now, if you've got ankylose teeth, it'll still bring the whole bone structure out and carry the ankylose tooth uh, with it in many instances. If the ankylose tooth is on the bus and you move the bus, it goes with it too. So, we're going to show some of the many uses of this wire uh, and today uh, this arch I want to show is a lady that worked for me and her arches were just kind of long tapered arches like this and you spread them out and as you spread them these arches the front part is going to go in like that so we brought a protrusive face back actually by broadening it out like that and that works and the big daddy arch wire does it'll do that it doesn't matter you you make the thing fit what you want it to be like and you can change the whole shape of the arch up here now if you expand somebody and you go out here past what see the the thing that controls the movement of the teeth all your life is that the tongue pressure from the inside is pushing out and the lips and the cheeks and everything from the sides hold it back in that way and the teeth get in this gap right here and that is where nature puts them I don't care whose diagnosis you use if you go past that or underneath it something like that, then the teeth are going to tend to go back that way in in the retention. But there's a way out of this. Now, like when we expand somebody, like I took this lady's and did the arch like that. Now, the tongue pressure won't keep it there like it's to start with, but you wear your retainer during this time, and the tongue finally pushes the whole arch out to a neutral zone. In other words, if you keep it organized and you stay with the retention of it, and so this old bull about wearing a retainer so many months or so many weeks, this is a, a ridiculous thing. You've got to wear this retainer until the whole dental arch, the whole mechanism up here goes out to where we have a neutral zone in this and now this is true it mean uh, the it'll take it there if you if you expand somebody past their uh, this zone then it will move the teeth out there so you have to wear a retainer until it quits going out there and you've got a thickness of the retainer you have to deal with so let's get started on this case and I want to show you uh, some really good things you could do with this big daddy arch. Now this lady 
worked for me for several years and learned orthodontics and learned how to help in, in many stuff. And so she wanted to get her teeth brought back in. She also had a temporal mandibular joint problem. So we're going to throw that in the, the whole thing, see, right here. So we're going to we're going to get rid of that. Now, on the uh, we've got a whole slew of pictures here, so I'm going to go as fast as I can, and you can slow them down and go them back and forth if you want to. This right side of the mouth is correct. I mean, this is this is the way it is. This is a uh, class one. These teeth are going right in the spot. This even got the six keys of occlusion. This distal cups back over here and and the anterior is off up here in the front because the other side of the mouth is not lined up like that. So we'll go to the other, uh, the other side of the mouth and we've got a class two mouth occlusion. This should go there, this here, here, and this is not back far enough on this side over here. So you need to bring this up. So your midline is going to be off on the case. Now, both of these arches are narrow. In other words, she's looks like an arrow head right in here. Now we're going to expand this. You can take the Big Daddy arch now and you make it fit. In other words, you're going to come out in this area and you come in in this area and come out over here when you make it. And now you can expand it, bring it out, whatever you want, and you push it in, and it will expand these teeth more than these up here in the front of the mouth. So as you move these teeth out, in other words, if somebody out an uh, arch like that develops, a lot of times the, uh, the teeth will go in like this and maybe they're hitting more on the buckle cusp but they're not, but this doesn't look like it is. But this is what we want the arch to go to. And we're going to show this lady several years. This is 1987 right here. And uh, she's probably 45 or something like that. And uh, it I don't care how old she is, by the way. And we can move the arches out there if you've got an ankylose tooth and you bring the whole arch out, the ankylose tooth tends to go out there with the, with the bone structure. In other words, it's on the bus. You move the bus out, it goes with the bus like that. If not, you loosen it up and take it out there. But I've never had one that held back like that. So we're going to take this arrowhead arch like this and widen it in this area and then bring it back in here. So you need to bend your big daddy arch wire in that shape and put it up here. And if you want to measure how far it goes in there, then you use your, your doctrix gauge and you can push on this and find out exactly how much force this has. You hook one side up and then this you push the other one down. And when you get it, I'm sorry, uh, when you put it over there, It'll be half that much and half over on the other side of the mouth. Uh, so it widens it, and you can tell exactly how much force you got in there, on there. So let's get on to uh, something else here. On Now on the bottom arch, look at the shape of this arch, like this. Now, if you take somebody and start straight through it, and you widen it out, look what happens to the front of it. This is going to go back in here, and it's going to come out more back here, but we'll come something like this, and we can make this arch how we want it to make it look good, make the facial structure look good. And this is 1987, and I will show you this in 1990-something, something, 96, I believe. It's not quite 10 years out, but then I know the lady, and she came back in, and it's still that way, and I'll guarantee you today it'll be that be that same way. Okay, let's get on with this. 
Now here we come in and put a regular arch wire in here. Now we did several things on this lady. We got down low with the lower arches. I don't care where you put the arch up here, but you're going to see it so we can come off of the molar, drop down and, and go around low on this, and you won't even see the lower arch. You'll see the upper. And we were working there in the office, and so they wanted these porcelain uh, brackets or tooth colored brackets, so we put these across here. Now, I don't like those things for torquing and stuff, but uh, they like them, and so we used it. And so we worked to a, put a rectangular arch in. Do not try to torque the teeth with a big daddy arch wire. There's an article on, on Lens where the uh, author was trying to torque the teeth with the big daddy arch wire. You could do something maybe to torque one of the molars, but you can't make this round wire torque the teeth. You put it on the side and you bring it out here, then the tooth's going to, if it's going straight like this, you move the crown out, the roots will go back in the other direction. It'll rotate somewhere up in here. This is like bone structure. I'll show that to you, and I want people to understand you've got to put the torque on these teeth in a rectangular arch. Do not try to torque it with the big daddy arch. Now, if you get somebody who's just going to little expand a little bit, you look at them and their teeth are in this way, and you can pull them out here, and you don't have to do a thing. But if you're going to go on out like this, then you've got to bring these roots out. This is where the airway is up here, and that's what you're after in most of these cases. The people that are allergic and all sorts of problems that cause people to breathe through their mouth. And the, the, if you're breathing through the mouth, your tongue's down in the bottom, and there's nothing to make the upper arch expand like it normally should. And so that's why we want children to nurse for two, three years even, and they develop this part of the mouth early, and they develop and they are less likely to uh, be subjected to the exposure to uh, allergies like that. So this, this, this all sorts of health things go in with orthodontics. So let's get ahead, uh, go ahead and do another uh, deal here. We got a long way to go here. All right, so we are going put a rectangular arch up above. We're going to expand that, and we want to go out. As you go with the tooth, if the tooth starts to show up like it's biting on the lingual cusp, then you've got to put more force on this right there. So you do an arch wire, and you catch it behind the cuspid up here, and you do a progressive torque in that wire. You twist that wire till it's set up. Now, if you can uh, visualize in your, in your head, I mean, we're going to show you, say, the uh, crown or the bracket in a molar or a bicuspid, and you're, it's in, in the side of the bicuspid. Let me just uh, draw a little bit here and show you. Now, here is the side of a molar tooth, like that. And you put your bracket in here, and the brackets are uh, your bond. They've got a shelf here, and then and they stick out like this. And you've got the deals. Uh, maybe you can visualize it. Now I use an O one eight bracket slot. In other words, this distance here on the bracket is O one eight. This distance here is O two. Five. You can see that's a two <laughs> there. Now, that the wire, the 018, is that diameter. It fits into this slot. The slot has to be slightly bigger than 018. Now, I like to use smaller arch wires. Most of you have been taught 
to use O22 wire and O22 is is too big. I don't like, I can bend the O18 a lot more and torque better with it than I can with the O22. So I, I use the O18. And the reason they used O22, the guy that invented them came had a disc that cut an O22, O22 wire, so it's got a greater dimension in here like that. And you got a bigger arch wire. You can use a smaller arch wire if you want to. Now these are some facts about torquing teeth. If you've got a slot in here and you fill it like we do most of our work in 017. In other words, we're one thousand smaller than this opening in the in the arch. Uh, in the bracket right here. For every one thousandth of slop you put in there, you lose four degrees, I don't know how you write, degrees, four degrees of torque. So you have to add the amount of torque you want if you put a lot of space in, in, in the arch. Now this gets a little complicated here, but don't scare I don't want to scare you off from using it. Now, so if we want this tooth to torque out in this direction, we have to put an arch wire and we catch the arch wire behind the cuspid and twist it at the end. You, you turn a little end up on the arch wire, you've got it going around like this and you turn the end up like here. You catch it here at the cuspid and hold it with one power and you get back here and twist it. And now the wire, when it gets back to the molar, the, may have a torque in it, something like this. Now, if I flatten that out and stick it into this crack right here, then this arch wire, now I'm going to do my hands up here. This is the bracket slot. Now we take this arch wire and we bend it like that. Now I bend it down, but it wants to come up this this way. Now, so I bend it down. Now this is gonna, when I do that, it's gonna tend to move the root of the tooth out in this direction. It's just natural, that's the way it wants to go. But, don't forget this. That's not the way the tooth goes. The roots of this tooth are in bone structure up here. So if you take an arch wire and put buckle root torque, that's, this is the buckle, the outside is a buckle. You put buckle root torque in your arch wire right here, put it in there, and you just leave it with the arch wire. The arch wire doesn't have enough strength to keep the crown out there and the torque will overpower the, the resistance of that tooth and instead of getting buckle root torque you're going to get lingual crown torque. In other words this tooth will move in and the roots of it may move out a little bit but it'll move in. Now we do not want that. We want this tooth brought out bodily. So when we expand it, we want the tooth to move out that way. So we put this large arch wire over here. We overlay it over this. And this arch wire is out here. We bend it in and it will not let this tooth go in in the crown. So the this carries the tooth out and it carries the roots out with it. Your arch wire carries the, the roots out. It's got that force in there. If you didn't have this big wire in here, this crown would move in a lingual direction. So don't try to torque with a round, large wire in there. That's not what it's meant for. And I hope to goodness everybody understands. You can do all sorts of things with this wire. If you just stick it on the outside, it costs nothing. I mean, virtually nothing to build these 
big daddy orange wires and it's in it's on the outside you can take it off when you want to you can add uh, the more than you want you can expand anybody as big as you want to with this orange wire and then the bone will gradually go out you just put the gradual pressure on there and it'll expand these teeth i don't care who you are what race you come from whatever it is you can do that with a large arch wire like that. You can put a force enough in there to do that. So we got to get moving here. But I hope you understand, do not torque with this wire. You torque with the rectangular wire right here. And then you can take the wire, you bend it down. You got it up here, you bend it down. It tends to to do, I mean, you, you stick it in there and it's going to bring that tooth down in that direction. All right. Now, when you, when you bend it down, you say it, it's going to want to force the tooth back that way, but it doesn't. And, you, and if you pull this over here, this will move this in. So, all right. Let's get on to this case and do this. Uh, erase that and go back now. Uh, all right, we're, this lady had a TMJ problem, so we put a bonded blocks on the arch, and we brought her the arch, brought her lower arch further forward to get her condyle off the retrodiscal tissue, and that stopped the TMJ problem. We brought these teeth down lower in here, and these up above. And now we're going to put a rectangular arch in the upper. And uh, we brought this out and then uh, let her back teeth come up into contact. And then we can take that uh, pad off there. So we're moving the jaw further forward. And we're going to put a ramp on it to keep it. All right, now I can, I think, can you enlarge this? Uh, I don't think we can do this, but this is the way we put the arch in the bottom arch. You come up like this, and then you make a little circle. And you've got this will be out, and think of this in a, in a round arch. Now don't think about it as a flat thing. So we got the other side to, f uh, to fit in here too. So this will be expanded out here, maybe uh, I expand them usually about something like that on both sides. Uh, but to start off with, you don't want to stick this on some idiot that uh, he may come back, uh, may leave and go stay in a, somewhere else. Uh, if they don't show back, this is a little fine and move the teeth out to that point. And you tie each teeth, each of the teeth, the second one to this. And so it brings the whole arch out. It will be more in the back, and that's where you want more of the pressure. And up in here, we wanted a lot of the pressure in this area. So we built this wire about away from the teeth here. And then when we expand it, now we come in, and it's still got space out here. It's going to move these teeth further than it moves the molar teeth back here. I don't want to lose anybody uh, saying, well, this is too blooming complicated. If you work at it and study it and work with it, you'll get to where you can do this. Now, now if you're, if you're just a, a, an orthodontist and you've been doing this for years, you may think this is just a bunch of uh, junior stuff, but it's not. I mean, here we're torquing these teeth. And if we want to band or bracket this tooth back here and pull it out, it'll torque all of these teeth. And down on the bottom, if you want to just spread it some and maybe torque it a little bit, you can do that. You can better put a rectangular arch in here and it'll do that. Now, we put the pads in here so we can move the jaw forward and now we'll take them off and let the black teeth come together back here and that'll support it and then we'll bring these teeth together and we're going to finish up with a rectangular, I mean a 
mouthpiece with a, a forward positioning ramp on it for the TMJ stuff. So that gets it even <laughs> further complicated. I don't want to scare you off of it. Now, you can drop the bands down to where you you can put the brackets right down over the gum line on adults if if you just know how to use the arch wire run the arch wire down a little like that you don't even see this uh, stuff here and it'll have the top edges of the teeth lined up like that so you drop off to do that now this we're finishing up with it and we've got it looking like that now there this, if you look at it from the side, it, it goes in like that. And the same way over on this side of the mouth. Now, we made a retainer. We put a bite plate on the retainer. You build the retainer, then you put some soft material in here, and you have the person close to. And the lower teeth goes up, go up against that. If they've got real big send your limb on the teeth, level those out so that that becomes a kind of a shelf for your lower anterior teeth to bite up against that. Now, putting that on your the teeth, there is a trick to it, and there's a lot of people don't know that, you see. Now, this tooth is thinner, and we made it joined so the edges are all like that. Now, the when you uh, people don't realize that when you tell somebody to bite too, if you throw their head back like this, the, the jaw goes back with it. You can just put your own teeth and tap together, and now bring your jaw forward, and now go down here and bite, and your front teeth will be out in front here. And if you make a bite plate on somebody, make it in the position that they chew or eat their food in and where they keep the jaw. Make it here. Don't do this and don't do that. I remember when I was in dental school, a teacher was showing us how to make a bite for dentures and he threw it against the person's mouth like that. Like and that, the denture doesn't fit now when he makes it out. You've got the different places that the jaw closes together and you want it to close where they normally bite to when they close in that respect. So that's another thing to throw in here that you have to remember. So here we make this cane, we bonded the lower teeth together here to hold that in place because we're going, we're changing the shape of this person's face and the tongue had made the arch this way now we want to make it this way and if you keep it that way long enough and they wear a retainer it'll make the whole complex move forward till you've got it into a neutral zone here and then you start leaving the retainer out now this old bull of wearing a retainer six months or three months and now all day and then wear it and now and all that. That's just a bunch of bull. That's it. Some people need to wear one all the rest of their life. If your teeth are past a point where the neutral zone is out and you have to keep doing that, if it comes back, you can't wear it. I remember Loretta Young, a movie star, was wearing a retainer to keep her little toothy smile out there when she was old, an older lady. All right, let's go on here. Now we bond this thing in. Now here they've got the profile with, like we want it right there. And there it is again. Now this is 92, I believe it's 92, and that was 87. Now I watched this lady for years after that. She moved to uh, to Granberry down here and worked for an orthodontist and uh, helped him. And you can see where these teeth are lined up on this side and they're lined up on the other side. And uh, she wore a retainer at night with a ramp on it. 
and you put this in at night and it'll keep your teeth up here so you don't pull it back during the night time. During the daytime she wore a very small ridge in there and they kept the teeth in that position and she still has that teeth like this and here she is older and her teeth are the same way and this is 1987 and there's 1996 all right from 87 to 96 we got about uh, six and three of in about nine years in here. It shifted back just a wee bit here, but that's all. I mean, it stayed like that because she wore her retainer longer. Now, you can't, there's no way, if anybody just tells everybody the same blooming way to wear a retainer, that is foolish. It is not the way. I mean, so you've got to wear the retainer till you get the whole complex to a point of neutral facial pressure here and here and here is the same. So I thank you for watching this. This is 1987. There she is in 1996. All right. There it is over here on this side. And there it is in 96. And this is the arch that we started from. And there the arch is in 96. Now, this is a unusual. I don't think her, her tongue would just automatically keep this in this position. But we wore the retention until this stayed in that position. And then we wrote a ramp to keep it up here, keeps the condyle off of the, uh, the retrodiscal tissue and stop the TMJ problem, and we did all this together. So this gets pretty complicated in a way, but you can take these videos and go backwards and forwards in any way you want to until you learn it and learn how to do it. Now you, I don't, I don't have no earthly idea who's gonna listen to this or look at it and there's people all over this uh, YouTube thing, is, uh, and uh, we've got these videos that go on Facebook too, uh, somewhere. They can see them, and you can go backwards and forwards until you can get this down, and you can learn how to do it. But it's better if you go to some, uh, the American Orthodox Society will take people in and teach them but we can't get people from all over the world, but you can get study clubs out there and learn how to do this. If you're orthodontist and you know it, well, okay, just look at something else. But people who need to learn this, you can learn it from that. I thank you for watching it, and I, I, I ain't gonna be around <laughs> all this long. But as long as God gives me the breath, I'm going to try to straighten orthodontics out and we will try to do complicated adult orthodontics ought to be done by people that go to the university and study orthodontics. And the people that are teaching it in the universities probably don't know how to do all this adult orthodontics. They ought to learn it and teach it. And this simple stuff ought to be done by anybody that is, cares enough to learn it. But don't boo do this junk orthodontics. I think that uh, the pediatric dentist, it is ridiculous that they don't take children and do these little orthodontic steps along the way and do that. That is so ridiculous. I want pediatric dentists to be free to do the, the pediatric orthodontics and they want to carry them on till they're older, that's fine too. But there's adult orthodontics out here that's just going untreated because people don't want to do it. And that's, that's a fact. So I want to close up. And this is the way we ended up with this young lady at 80. 
in 1996. It was like that. And here she is. She was a faithful worker. And thank you now, and I'm going to sign off, and I hope I haven't hacked it off too much so you'll uh, learn this. But I just don't care if people are just learning to do junk stuff and so they can do it, hurry. So I'm going to close out now.